Hello, my name is Tibri Sensei and welcome to Explaining Horrors, the brand new series in which we will be exploring a multitude of different ghouls, ghosts, creatures, villains, demons, scary people, or whatever from various horror media. The subject of today's video are horror mangaka Junji Ito's very own Azawa siblings, Yuma and Chizumi. These two strange siblings come from Junji Ito's Dissolving series, originating from the Dissolving Classroom story. I suppose the best place to start with these two bizarre children would be from the very beginning. When Yuma was a young child and his sister Chizumi only an infant, their parents were very strict and would frequently yell at Yuma. Yuma began going into the forest and killing small animals. He states that he did this as an outlet for the stress his parents put on him, but this wasn't the whole truth. As his sister explains, Yuma was not killing these animals to relieve stress, but rather as sacrifices for a ritual. A ritual to summon the devil. Apparently, this ritual was a success. Yuma had got into contact with the devil himself and they made some sort of pact. A pact that is never really explained to us in the story. All that is said about it is that one night Yuma returned home from the forest shivering and apologizing to seemingly no one. After that night, Yuma became addicted to apologizing. He would apologize to anyone and everyone for anything and for a lot of the time, nothing. But when Yuma apologizes to people, something very terrible begins to happen to their bodies. It will start with symptoms that most people mistake as a common cold or allergies. Runny nose, watery eyes, and a feeling of being a bit spaced out mentally. But the more apologies Yuma gives to a person, the worse their condition becomes, until eventually, for the lack of better wording, their brain literally melts, followed by the rest of their body. The reason this happens is very strange, so bear with me, but basically, when Yuma is apologizing to people, he is not actually apologizing to the person in front of him, but rather he is praying to the devil for forgiveness. What exactly he needs forgiveness for remains a mystery, but when he apologizes to the devil, he is filled with an exquisite pleasure. I suppose like a high that he gets from it. A high possibly granted to him by the devil. As his little sister explains, when Yuma communicates with the devil, there are, and I quote, evil electromagnetic waves that pass between him and the devil. So essentially, when Yuma is apologizing to people, these waves are passing through the person in front of him and traveling to the devil, which I guess sort of microwaves the person's brain, causing it to melt and melting their entire bodies as well after enough of the waves have passed through them. On one occasion, while apologizing to the heads of their deceased parents, it is shown that Yuma's apologies can actually get strong enough to combust whatever is between Yuma and the devil into flames. However, this only happens once. The first victims of Yuma's brain melting seem to have been Yuma and Chizumi's own parents, whose heads they actually keep with them wherever they go. You see, after the death of their parents, Yuma and Chizumi began traveling across Japan from one small town to the next, terrorizing and murdering many of the residents before moving on to the next town. The reason for this is also unknown. It's clear that Yuma's goal is to apologize to as many people as possible, and it can be assumed that his constant apologies are a condition of whatever pact he made with the devil, but it's never explained why they seem to leave town before all the residents have been melted. Even if people began getting suspicious, he could simply apologize to them profusely and melt them on the spot, so I have no idea why they're constantly on the run. Melting people's brains through apologies, however, is not the only thing Yuma is capable of. A similar effect occurs when Yuma gives people compliments. It seems in some towns, instead of apologizing to people, he gets himself a girlfriend and compliments her endlessly. However, as you could have guessed, Yuma is never actually complimenting the girl, but instead he is praising the devil. These compliments through the same evil electromagnetic waves as the apologies also cause people to melt, but in a slightly different way. They begin to deteriorate from the outside, meaning that, ironically, the more he compliments a girl, the uglier she becomes until she is unrecognizable. It's unclear if Yuma is actually able to kill anyone using this method, as the first girl he does this to in the story dies from his apologies, and the second is only left as a hideous mess, but not dead. It's also unclear why the evil energy in the compliments affect the human body differently than the apologies. It seems one melts from the inside and the other melts from the outside. I suppose it's probably some sort of metaphor from the author that I'm too lazy to put into words, but in a literal sense there is no reason given for it. It can also be assumed that Yuma's compliments are also part of the pact he made with the devil and that they give him some sort of pleasure as well, just like the apologies. Otherwise, I don't know why he would be doing it. Now, as if this whole thing wasn't strange enough already, the liquid slime that people become after Yuma melts them is actually still able to speak somehow in certain instances. 
almost as if their souls are tied to the slime. But not only can they speak, they are also shown being able to still control their bodies in this liquid form. Another unexplained aspect of Yuma's abilities left for the reader to ponder. Before moving on to Chizumi, however, there is one last ability that Yuma's Pact with the Devil has granted him, and that is the ability to summon the dead back from hell. In the story Dissolving Apartment, it is shown that Yuma enjoys bringing his previously melted parents back to life. In this state, they seem as though they are not fully aware of themselves, however, they are able to speak and seem to know that they did die previously. The reason Yuma brings them back is so that they will beat him and yell at him, because as if he wasn't weird enough already, the guy is also a masochist. Eventually, he apologizes to them, melting their bodies and sending them back to hell, but according to his sister, this isn't the first time he's done this. It's unclear if this ability to bring the dead back from hell is just limited to his parents or it expands to any soul in hell, as he never summons anyone besides his parents. Now, as much of a mystery that Yuma is, his younger sister Chizumi is even more mysterious. Chizumi is presented as this entirely evil being. Unlike her brother who tries to hide his dark intentions and wears a mask of apologetic politeness, Chizumi is openly rude and hostile towards everyone who crosses her path. She spends most of her time stalking and tormenting the people who Yuma has interacted with. She's also obsessed with drinking the melted remains of the people Yuma has killed. The origins of Chizumi's behavior are quite vague, if not completely unknown. This is because Yuma gives three contradicting reasons as to why she's evil. Almost everything that Yuma says is a lie. In fact, throughout the entire Dissolving series, Yuma never admits to anything he's done. He does not ever break character and reveal his evil. Because of this, it's hard to tell if any of Chizumi's origins he provides are true. The first time he spoke of it, he says that he believes Chizumi's evil to be divine wrath, a punishment to him for killing those small animals when he was younger. He says that he's sure that Chizumi was possessed by one of the snakes he killed as a child. In this story, Chizumi is portrayed as a young girl before she turns evil. He later says that Chizumi was just a baby when his parents died and that she ended up tasting their melted bodies and now she can't get enough. I'm positive this isn't true because unlike her brother, Chizumi never seems to lie in any of the stories. She is very blunt and tells everyone what her brother is really doing when he apologizes or compliments them. And Chizumi tells one of the characters about her brother returning from the forest one night after performing the ritual apologizing to no one, like I said. If Yuma's parents died from being melted after he made the pact with the devil and acquired these abilities, then Chizumi could not have been a baby when they died, otherwise she wouldn't have remembered the night Yuma made the pact with the devil. In another instance, Yuma states that Chizumi was born from her mother and the devil, and because of this, she can never be good, which obviously contradicts his other stories that claim she was a good kid before he killed the snakes or before she tasted the brains. All that being said, we don't know why Chizumi is the way that she is, although my theory is that she is actually possessed by a demon, possibly as a condition of Yuma's pact. Besides her being ridiculously evil, there are a few reasons as to why it seems as though she's possessed. Firstly, she somehow knows about Yuma's pact with the devil despite only seeing him return home from the forest that night. And she also knows exactly why Yuma's apologies and compliments affect people the way that they do. Like, down to the science of it. So she has this knowledge that she really shouldn't have unless she is familiar with this stuff as a demon would likely be. But outside of that, she also moves in ways very unnatural for a small girl or even a human for that matter. When stalking people, Chizumi is shown to be able to keep up with teenagers and young adults running away from her, even to the point where she will vanish and appear somewhere else in front of her target, similar to what Jason frequently does in the Friday the 13th movies. So her speed is not normal, she's also seen leaping great distances, her strength as a young girl seems greater than that of an adult, and her tongue is freakishly long, extending far past the length of a normal human tongue. But the most damning evidence pointing to Chizumi being a demon is how Yuma's apologies affect her. Yuma at one point attempts to apologize to Chizumi in order to melt her. She responds to this by laughing and telling him that it won't work on her. In fact, she states that the evil energy will only make her stronger. I can't see how that would make sense unless there was something inhuman about her. Anyways, another aspect of these two characters that is somewhat confusing and mysterious is their relationship with each other. It's sort of difficult to really pinpoint how Yuma and Chizumi feel about each other as siblings because they are sticking together after their parents' death, but neither of them ever seem to show any real love for each other. 
It's possible that the two of them are only still together out of convenience or necessity. Yuma is always going around apologizing for his sister's behavior, which according to her he enjoys doing because, as I explained, he receives great pleasure from apologizing. So in that regard, I suppose Chizumi gives Yuma a reason to apologize, but then again, he doesn't really need a reason as shown multiple times in the story. In fact, Chizumi in reality is only in Yuma's way because she goes around telling everyone his true intentions. Chizumi seems to hate her brother, calling him a deadbeat in the Dissolving Apartment story. However, like I said, she is obsessed with drinking the melted remains of his victims, which would imply that she needs to stick around in order to satisfy her cravings. Yuma, on the other hand, is a strange case because it seems like he does care for his sister in some regard, as he does take her with him from town to town, and he does take care of her from what we've seen. He actually keeps labeled jars of his victims' melted remains, and claims to do this to preserve them for Chizumi to drink. However, Chizumi claims that he actually just likes collecting them. She then attempts to drink one and Yuma stops her, which would imply that once again, Chizumi was telling the truth and Yuma was lying. When Chizumi takes a liking to a young boy her age in the Chizumi in Love story, Yuma actually goes to the trouble of kidnapping the boy and tying him up for Chizumi as he seems to believe that maybe love will change her from the evil being she's become. In that same story, however, Yuma, as I explained earlier, attempts to kill his sister with his apologies in what might be the scene that provides the most insight on their relationship. Yuma is alone with Chizumi in this instance, which leads me to believe that he is being sincere, as there is no one around that he needs to fool. He expresses his anger with her, saying, Don't you understand how hard it is for me to clean up your careless mistakes? And he attempts to melt her. When that doesn't work, he tries to strangle her, but she claws herself free. This scene seems to tell us that Yuma hates Chizumi because of how difficult she makes things for him, but at the same time, he seems to hold out some hope that she can change, and he does care for her, as he does clean up her mistakes time and time again, and he does try to help her fall in love right after this. I suppose a love-hate relationship is the best way to describe it. Anyways, there isn't much more information I can provide on the Azawa siblings besides what they did in the stories, and something else I want to add to these explaining horrors videos which is the kill count. So I'll be brief with this because the stories really aren't that complicated. The Dissolving series is split into five stories, Dissolving Classroom, Dissolving Beauty, Dissolving Apartment, Chizumi in Love, and Interview with the Devil. Dissolving Classroom tells the story of Yuma and Chizumi as they torment a small town they've moved to, particularly focusing on Yuma at school. A girl at the school, Kiko Arisu, takes particular interest in him and his sister, attempting to befriend them only to realize how horrific they truly are. Eventually, he melts everyone at the school, leaving only Kiko as the survivor and they leave the town. Dissolving Beauty simply tells the story of Yuma and one of his girlfriends from another town that he horrendously disfigures with his compliments. Dissolving Apartment is a story about an apartment block concerned about the children's well-being after hearing their parents yell at them and abusing Yuma. Of course, as I explained, these were his parents' return to life through Yuma's powers. Eventually, he melts a few people in the apartment complex and they leave town once again. Chizumi in Love follows Chizumi more closely as she seemingly falls in love with a young boy. Yuma attempts to help her, however, with the help of the slime people that they keep in bottles, the boy is able to escape and the siblings leave town once again. The last story, which is probably the most interesting, is Interview with the Devil. The girl who survived in the first story has brain damage from the event and she arrives at Yuma and Chizumi's house in the woods in a wheelchair with a journalist. According to the journalist, they were able to find them through the girl's newfound powers. He says that surviving the incident at the school granted her psychic abilities that allow her to somehow sense where Yuma is. His goal is to get to the bottom of the multiple melting incidents popping up all across the country, believing Yuma to be the source of the crisis. Yuma and Chizumi go on the run from them, and the journalist finds them again, and he publishes an article accusing them. Eventually, this forces Yuma and Chizumi to go to the office of the newspaper the journalist works for in order to clear their names. This leads to a publicly televised news broadcast in which Yuma is to speak on the events and explain himself. He uses this as an opportunity to apologize to everyone watching for the actions of him and his sister, of course, leading to the largest mass murder Yuma has ever committed melting potentially millions of people across the world. But the craziest part is that we find out the journalist was actually the devil himself in disguise orchestrating the entire event. Kiko actually did not have any psychic powers to find Yuma. It was simply the devil using her in her brain damaged state as a way to explain how he was able to continuously find Yuma. Now, throughout these stories, the Izawa siblings, or 
rather just Yuma I suppose, obviously killed a lot of people, but I'm going to attempt to give an estimate of just how many people that might have been. First of all, Yuma murdered his parents, so that's two. His next victims are three school bullies, making it five. And then the entire school. On the panels, we see at least 12 people dead in the school, making 17 shown deaths in the first story. However, we learn that Kiko was actually the only survivor in the entire school. According to my research, the average high school in Japan houses a bit more students than the average high school in the States, so I'd say there could have been anywhere from 600 to 1,000 students, and I'm not sure how many staff members that translates to. Let's say maybe 40 to be safe. In Dissolving Beauty, Yuma only kills his ex-girlfriend off-screen. In Dissolving Apartment, Yuma kills his parents again if you want to count that, as well as three other residents of the apartment. In Chizumi in Love, Yuma kills the parents of the young boy that Chizumi is in love with, and we can also see a few labeled bodies of his past victims. Two of them being the named residents of the apartment complex from the previous story, so I will assume that the third victim from the apartment complex is there as well and not count three of them. That still leaves 23 bottles unaccounted for. Now the final story, Interview with the Devil, is obviously the hardest one to count as the news broadcast killed anyone who was watching. I can tell you, however, that there are at least 70 people in the room with Yuma during the broadcast. Now the final page of the manga states that the broadcast was spread all across the world by the media and the imagery seems to imply almost an apocalyptic level event. Assuming that not everyone watched it because not everyone has access to the internet and television, and some people must have avoided watching it after learning what was happening to people that do, I'm going to estimate that at least 1 billion people were killed by Yuma's televised apology. You know what, it could be 2 billion or more based on what the last page seems to imply. It would have also spread across the internet and more people would have died as an after effect of the initial deaths, being that governments might collapse and a whole number of terrible things might occur as a result of so many people just melting. I'm going to say that at least 2 billion people to be safe, but I imagine it could have been much more. I suppose after that number, it's not even worth mentioning that before the events of the story, it's implied that Yuma and Chizumi had already been traveling around Japan, leaving a trail of bodies in their wake. For that, I'd probably tack on an extra 2,000 deaths or so. So let's say Yuma killed about 2,003,158 people. Give or take. Probably the largest kill count you will see in one of these videos unless we cover a character who ended the entire world. Anyways, that's gonna be it. If there are any other horror characters you'd like to see me cover in such ridiculous detail, please drop them in the comments below and you might see them in a future Explaining Horrors video. If you're still here at this point, thanks for watching, subscribe if you're new to the channel, leave a like, and please share the video with your friends to help the channel grow. Later guys.